Welcome everybody to another edition of Token Topics. We're going to dive into some latest XRP news and information. We're going to look under the hood and look at some of the features of the XRP ledger and why XRP does not, yes, does not need smart contract capability. We're also going to look into an article from the DEA on offline payments and also we're going to look into the ECBs or European Central Bank's Digital Euro and EPI. So we're also going to look over that and many more things. If you're an XRP fan, you don't want to miss this video. Please understand I'm not paid for or sponsored by Ripple. With that out of the way, let's dive in. Keep your crypto safe with a decent biometric hardware wallet. With talks about cyber attacks or exchanges going down, it's imperative to keep your assets safe. And just know with Descent, your private keys are your private keys and only you have access to them. In the description below, I'm going to put affiliate links where you can receive $30 off the retail price. There's also a two wallet package deal that's a great value. There's no need to wait. Order your wallet and keep your crypto safe now. All right, let's look under the hood of the XRP ledger. This is from Emi Yoshikawa. She states that she had the pleasure of speaking to token economists about the evolution of the XRP ledger, new developments in interoperability such as sidechains, DEX, AMM, decentralized identity, tokenization, and more. Let's go ahead and dive into this article to see what she has to say. All right, I'm going to go ahead and skip right to the good parts. So she states that Ripple has been providing international remit and solutions using blockchain technology to financial institutions, but in recent years, it has expanded its solution to various fields. For example, we are expanding the basic solutions needed for corporations to utilize blockchain technology, such as a liquidity solution called Liquidity Hub, tokenization functions such as CBDC or central bank digital currency, and crypto asset custody solutions. In parallel, we also continue to contribute to the development of the XRP ledger in support of the ecosystem. For example, we propose new features of the XRP ledger to the community. Adoption on the mainnet depends on validator voting results and provide grants and educational programs for developers who use the XRP ledger. In Japan, we also carry out activities to raise awareness of the XRP ledger, hold workshops and support the developers, and hold ideathons or ideathons. All right, let's continue with this excellent article. We're going to look into the evolution of the XRP ledger and also explain it to some people that might not understand that, you know, when they say XRP doesn't have smart contracts or smart contract capability, they might not understand that as far as remittances go, you don't always need smart contracts. And in fact, that's one of the beautiful things about XRP. I'm going to show you in this article right here. So if you see any typos in the article, it was translated from Japanese to English. So you might see some little, you know, areas. Okay. So continuing here, when the network was originally launched in 2012, it was the world's first multi-asset ledger that advocated the creation of the world, a world where anyone could easily issue tokens and exchange value instantly. Or in other words, the internet of value was born as DEX or decentralized exchange has existed as a native feature of the protocol since the network launched and it is said to be the world's first DEX. Now, since then, various functions have been added, but the major difference from EVM chains is that it has a variety of secure protocol functions that can be used immediately without using smart contracts. For example, complex remittances such as cross-currency remittances, escrow remittances, route searches, and issued of fungible tokens and NFTs can be performed without the need for smart contracts using protocol features that have been vetted by the community and implemented through governance. Now, from a developer's perspective, it allows them to easily implement features and avoid smart contract security risk without having to learn a new smart contract language such as Solidity. Users also have the advantage of being able to use features that have been vetted by the community with confidence. For example, if the XRP Ledger's NFT is, uh, standard royalties are automatically executed as a protocol feature and other chains royalties are executed at the smart contract layer, so whether or not royalties are enforced depends on the marketplace policy, which has been controversial recently, but with the XRP Ledger, it depends on the marketplace. It is not a protocol policy, but it is a standard enforcement policy for all NFTs. So 
Now, the future of the XRP ledger, how do you make it attractive to, so people want to jump on board? She states that, first of all, in terms of expanding the functionality of the XRP ledger, various new features are currently being proposed and discussed in the community. For example, the existing DEX on the XRP ledger is in an order book or board trading format, but there's been a proposal to combine it with an AMM format, DEX. And the community is currently voting, if passed, this would create a hybrid DEX that combines order books and AMMs allowing XRP holders to earn rewards by providing liquidity through AMMs. This AMM uses continuous auction mechanism to auction arbitrage opportunities, making it an attractive mechanism for liquidity providers. Also, due to the nature of the XRP ledger, one of its features is that there is no MEV or maximum extractable value due to the front running. Other new features include expanded interoperability and programmability capabilities, a standard for cross-chain cross -chain bridge that enables sidechains has also been proposed and using this EVM sidechain is already in operation on a testnet. Once approved by a community vote, it will be possible to connect to the mainnet environment. This allows projects and EVM ecosystem to interoperate with the XRP Ledger ecosystem, and it is expected that many EVM-based projects will join the XRP Ledger in the future. Additionally, an on-chain smart contract feature called Hooks has been proposed by the XRP Labs in the Netherlands, which is expected to expand the programmability features at XRP Ledger and expand its use cases. Other decentralized or DID protocols have also been proposed and lending protocols are currently being researched and developed. So as you can see here, they have some good ideas to make the XRP ledger more attractive. If you'd like to go through this article, it's in the description. Here's a great short document from McKinsey and Company. What is tokenization? So we are at the next era of the internet. Web3 is said to offer potential of a new decentralized internet controlled by participants via blockchains rather than profit-motivated corporations. But progress has been linear. One major setback has been the meltdown of the cryptocurrency market in 2022, triggered by multiple cryptocurrency failures and high-profile cases of fraud. Regulators are paving for increased attention to Web3 players and public curiosity is peaking. So let's get uh, specific. Tokenization is the process of issuing a digital representation of an asset. These assets can include physical assets like real estate, art, financial assets like equities, bonds, non-tangible assets like equities, property, or even identity and data. Tokenization can create several types of tokens, stable coins, a type of crypto pegged to real world money designed to be fungible or replicable, one example or another type is an NFT, a non-fungible token. So let's see how big tokenization is. The tokenization is potentially a big deal. Industry experts have forecasted up to $5 trillion in tokenized digital securities trade volume by 2030. What are the potential benefits of tokenization for financial services? Remember, the XRP ledger is a ledger that never sleeps. Some industry leaders believe tokenization stands to transform the structure of financial services and capital markets by letting asset holders reap the benefits of blockchain, including 24-7 operations and data availability. Blockchain also offers faster transaction settlements and a higher degree of automation via embedded code that only gets activated if certain conditions are met. So there you have faster transaction settlements fueled by 24-7 availability operational cost savings and remember we went over the smart contract part of the xrp ledger and democratization of access so a lot of different benefits here so how does an asset get tokenized asset sourcing the first step of tokenization is figuring out how to tokenize the asset in question tokenizing a money market fund for example will be different from tokenizing a carbon credit the, this process will require knowing whether the asset will be treated as a security or a commodity and which regulatory frameworks apply. Ripple is a proud member of the Digital Euro Association. And check out this article from the DEA on offline payments. It presents an inexpensive and usable solution for merchants.
While more and more humans are offline, some point of sale or POS still have no internet connectivity. Furthermore, even POS that generally have internet access may experience network outages from time to time. Consequently, offline payments are frequently cited by central banks as a requirement for central bank digital currencies and various commercial digital payment systems offer modes in which offline payments are possible. A recent report on offline payments by the Bank of International Settlement cites financial inclusion, resilience, and cash resemblance as the primary reasons why central banks desire offline support in central bank digital currencies. Our work addresses these concerns as financial inclusion is also always a question of cost as we improve resilience, as we handle situations where the, the point of sale is offline. And by integrating our solution with the GNU Taylor, we preserve cash-like privacy for buyers. We consider a point of sale to be a physical location where a merchant operation is using the point of POS machines operated by sellers to distribute goods for money to buyers. Diving deeper, we have the Twint style digital offline payment here for an example. For sellers who use Twint, a payment system used in Switzerland, they can also accept offline payments. For offline payments, the system generates a static QR code which is printed and then put on display for buyers. It contains the bank details of the seller with or without the price to pay. Now it's similar to PayPal's. So for example, right here, Twins Design is not an exception. PayPal offers essentially the same design with its static QR code payments. All right. So continuing here, we got public key uh, cryptography. Also time-based one-time passwords. That's TOTP. Time-based one-time passwords allow users to authenticate to an internet service using a shared uh, symmetric key and a current time. Got some graphs right here. All right, so here to sum it up, it talks about, you know, the different security. They considered a TOTP and SMS to be equally secure, and it gives an example right here. So in contrast, merchant scanning a QR code shown by a buyer's device for signature validation is likely to be the most cumbersome interaction of all presented approaches. So here's a conclusion that digital inverted TOTP authentication can be practical method for buyers to prove that the purchase had been made prove that they made whether you're a financial professional an overseas worker an entrepreneur or a developer you will find it faster easier more transparent and more affordable Send, receive, and manage digital value. Our world is in the midst of a profound transformation. We want that transformation to work for everyone. Here at Ripple, we're building financial solutions that are faster, more transparent, more sustainable and more efficient. What took days will now take seconds. What was costly will now be more economical. Call it the Internet of Value. It's blockchain technology solutions that will help put trillions in trapped capital back to work. It's environmentally responsible crypto innovation for a world that demands sustainability. And it's a whole new way to create, move, exchange, and leverage digital value. We're not just after something more. We're after something greater, which is why we're building it together with researchers and policymakers, financial professionals, developers, and entrepreneurs. This is the journey we're on together, enabling a world without economic borders, not just for a few, but for everyone.